Why South Sudan? An Every Village podcast where we answer questions about the world's youngest nation. The question of the day is, what do you love most about the Every Village team? Hey everyone, this is Tiana Johnston and I am the host of this podcast called Why South Sudan? Where we answer a question about the world's newest nation. So last time... I enjoyed having Daniel Lawal here in live in studio. And so I said, you know what? Let's have him back. So here he is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Tiana. <laughs> so glad you're back. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy seeing you again. <laughs> <laughs> so luckily, this time that you're in America, you'll be here for a few weeks. Yeah, I'll be here for a few weeks because, uh, bis- because of the business meetings and uh, some... Uh, fundraising event uh, but also my son is here you know for mm-hmm. uh, the hospital so we don't know how long it may take really it, it may be more than expected but yes I will be here for a while mm-hmm. yeah. well, we, we love having you in the office for sure <laughs> yeah thank you very much I, I love also seeing you guys and working together because uh, I know you have a genuine love for South Sudan and for what you are doing that's great yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, ah, we do. We really do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I was going to ask you. Okay, so how happy were you seeing South Sudan on the Olympics? Oh, that was excited. You know, that was uh, like the first time to see South Sudan participating uh, participating in what is the uh, could be what is the the world uh, competition. You know, it's like being in the World Cup. So that was great, and we enjoyed seeing South Sudan playing really strong. But <laughs> America uh, sit in the way because they're very strong. They are the world number one basketball team, and it's it's not easy for South Sudan to go through. So, but anyway, we uh, we were somehow able to play with America, and that was good. That was great, really. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I thought they did an outstanding job, especially being such a new, like a new team. Like it's yeah. just, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, it was really the awesome. first. It was the first time to participate in something like that, and they were able to go through some stages. But anyway, uh, we got knocked out. But we tried. We are so proud of our team, and mm-hmm. we enjoy watching them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so good. I mean, honestly, the South Sudanese. I wish there were so many more sports because, I mean, I feel like there's, yeah, like South Sudanese are so talented and y'all are incredibly tall. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) We, we tall and, you know, when you see the tall South Sudanese in the villages, they are very much skinny, Mm -hmm. uh, but very tall. Uh, So in the village, they don't have a built up, you know, a strong, uh, strong muscle. But the the one who went to uh, Olympics, some of them were from America here, some of them from Australia. They are South Sudanese living outside South Sudan, and some of them were from uh, South Sudan uh, villages, and still they were able to do well. So yeah, we are maybe if we continue training uh, for four years, you know, consistently, we may do better. Yeah, yeah. I'm praying. I'm praying for that. Yeah, 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 thank you. It is thank fun you. to cheer them on. <laughs> yeah. All right, so the question for you today is, what do you love most about the Every Village team? You've been with us for over 12 years now. Yes. And so, again, you've had many roles, but I guess maybe if you can sum up a little bit, like what are your favorite things about um, the Every Village team in South Sudan, in America, all of it? Yeah, thank you, Tiana. As I said before, uh, that I believe you have a genuine love for what you are doing and for the South Sudanese. One thing I like most about every village team is treating everybody equally, you know, like South Sudanese feel treated uh, equal human being, and uh, they have uh, privileges that uh, American <coughs> employees are also getting. So we, we, we like um, how passionate everybody is for what he or she is doing, you know, and uh, every village is uh, has a, I mean, every 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 team member is a strong believer, and uh, that what give me strength. And uh, 
coming together every day, you know, for uh, devotion. I like that. We go through the Bible and we discuss and, uh, you know, we talk about our life and about what God is doing in our life. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was really encouraged, you know, last year seeing Teresa Jock, you know, she's in Tonge and she got to fly on a plane for the first time. Yes. (laughs) Up to a (laughs) wheel, which was huge. Or even hearing in a wheel that we recently hired our first female staff, um, even in the wheel, wheel area. And we've been there, I think, 16 years. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We we have now a female staff on radio in a wheel and uh, also in town we do have female staff and uh, more females in, in, in Mavolo. And that is good. They're really growing and working well, you know, in a, in a culture where women are considered to be uh, uh, home managers. They, they remain home, you know, doing cooking and a lot of work to do uh, in, in, in the homes. Uh, taking care of their children, but were not expected to participate in the in the public uh, leadership, like in uh, uh, working in the offices. But uh, every village is helping uh, the women to come up and and participate and and work together with men. That is great. It it is something uh, new, but it is something that South Sudanese were already doing now, like in the government. There are women in the parliament, you know, in the ministries, and those are very educated ones who got opportunity to go to school. But in the villages, there's no a lot of chances for women to work. And I, I thank every village doing that, helping them, helping women to come up and, uh, and participate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's been also really encouraging to see, you know, people that have just been, you know, ground workers or contract labor Mm. and that they have been able to come on full-time staff or even, you know, even promoted up higher. You know, I know John Lawal, like he has been promoted even from radio and um, in in Tonj even specifically, I think of a few of our staff and just seeing them, how much they have flourished because we've seen good in them and their heart and wanting to, you know, invest in them. Yes, yes. It's it, it's good actually to grow from uh, from the bottom uh, upward, you know. And a uh, lot of our guys and uh, uh, ladies and, and, and men has been started, uh, they have started small and they, they grew bigger, you know, they got promoted. And uh, that helped, it helped, you know, to come from a a humble background and uh, to uh, that level of uh, management and uh, becoming uh, a specialist or a director. Even for myself, I started as a guard in Kampala, you know, when I was uh, studying. I didn't know that. Yeah, and uh, now I'm a country director today, which is... uh, a higher level compared to where I have I had been, so I I thank God how He is training us, you know, and bringing us up uh, with the humility. That that is great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that's really good. Um. So even speaking of our teams and like what you love most about them, um. You also, as country director, you're in charge of oh, how many? What eighty three? How many staff do we have now? Uh, it's now 88. 88. Oh. Yeah, 88, <laughs> actually, staff members. And, you know, we, we have other non-full-time employees, mm. you know, like in, in, in uh, the drilling team, we, we don't count them. And uh, we have one one guy in Juba, you know, working uh, for every village, but he's not a full-time employee. Mm-hmm. So we could be more than 88 members. Uh but yes, we have a lot of uh, a, a, a lot of uh, staff working with us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so since you're technically over them, I mean, you hear a, you get the good and the bad. You yeah, yeah you get the I complaints. Do. You get you know because <laughs> any organization or any business, there's always going to be conflict or issues that rise up. Yeah. But I think you've done such a good job at being level-headed and not taking sides or or anything like that, but also wanting to be honoring to God and keeping your focus on, you know, 
our heart of our mission is to glorify God and to bring Jesus to the people here. And I think you've done a really, really good job at that. Yes, yeah, thank you. To glorify God is the key. And that uh, one thing I love about every village, we keep reminding our team that whatever we are doing is not for ourselves, it is to glorify God, to give glory to him and uh, preach the gospel. And we need to be examples to our people. You know, the dignity, integrity is very important. So everything that's happened and everything we do, we remind ourselves what we are doing and why are we doing it. And so, yes, I do face some challenges with the team, you know, because sometimes there's a lot of complaint. And, uh, yeah, one thing I uh, don't enjoy very much is conflict resolution. You know, when <laughs> there is a conflict and I have to face it, when there's a problem and I have to solve it, you know, I, I have to call uh, the team and uh, we talk about it, go through it, and then find a solution, it's always hard and it is always challenging and it is not fun. So uh, that's part of work. Uh, but I enjoy working with the team because they know God and they know whatever they are doing is for God. Mm -hmm. And uh, they care about how their code of conduct look like. And that is very, very important. And I think South Sudanese people are learning from us and the church is actually uh, happy that we are partners, we are working together because we bring them together. We are like a figure of unity for the church, a local church in South Sudan. And I enjoy that about every village. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, also something I enjoy too is just is seeing the unity on the teams. You know, like yeah. I think even because I think y'all started doing the um, leadership retreats, I think like three years ago. Yes. Yeah, in Kampala. So that means that they would bring out um, all of the leaders from all of our areas and bring them to Uganda and do a leadership retreat. And it was so good. So it was like a lot of times it's their first time out of the country. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so they get to try, you know, the different foods. I think one time they had <laughs> Andrew gave everyone ice cream. Yeah. And they were like, oh, it, it's kind of like lotion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they said that lotion kind of thing. What what was it? It was tasting good, so delicious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so I really enjoyed seeing the leadership retreats because it's brought such unity, you know, in a in a, a nation that is so divided by tribes. Yeah. That seeing, you know, John Lowell and, in, you know, being so close to Abraham Magok, you know, or mm. just seeing... You know, our Movolo staff with our a wheel staff for Tonj or anything like it's just been so good to see. And I think the fun thing about South Sudanese is they, one, are a bit competitive and yeah. two, they love to play games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they do. They do. <laughs> when we give them some games to play in Kampala, they enjoy it a lot. And they, they remember what game and what happened when they were playing games. And uh, it, it does bring unity, but uh, another important thing is exposure. It helps them see the life in other countries and the life in, in, in a city because uh, most of them had never been to a city before. And whenever we promote someone to be a manager, you know, a leader, and uh, we include him in the retreat, they really like that. You know, they enjoy that. So the retreat brings uh, the unity and uh, the cross visit. Uh, sometimes we, 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 we allow some of the leaders to travel to another location, you know, and see the work there and uh, meet people there and, you know, work together. That brings unity. And the conferences, you know, when we are doing uh, conferences like pastors conference and other things uh, it bring people together or or when there is a training in one of the location like we do radio technical training water training and we bring people from other location to this one location where the training is so we we, we make sure that we we help our guys to to get uh, exposure and also uh, love each other and uh, and learn from other tribes because Mavolo is Jurmodo tribe 
and Tonch is Dinka, Awil is Dinka, Nasser, you know, Torpot is uh, Nuer. And uh, when you see this tribe who should be fighting, you know, praying together, share the word of God together and working together, it's really a good fun and it is encouraging mm -hmm. that uh, we are really building a nation for Christ. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. It is so good. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> I know. Good. It has been it has been a delight. I know I'm going on my eighth year now with every village. So Yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. We're so proud of you, Tiana. Uh, you know, you uh, you the only lady, right? <laughs> Working among men and you are doing tremendously well. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, luckily, I always say that I'm the boss over Andrew's schedule. So <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> <I> you can, are. <laughs> I can boss him around a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I know I'll be going on a trip here in a few months, so I'm excited to go back and see everyone. And people are missing you, especially oh. in Tonch, where you you had been. You know, you lived there uh, many years. I can't remember, but. Mm -hmm. uh, they they are always missing you when they hear that Tiana is going to come. They say, "Oh, they clap their hands," you know. I know. So they're looking forward to seeing you again. Me too. And, uh, in a wheel as well. Mm -hmm. When I yeah. brought Daniel, my husband, the other Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when he, whenever you say Daniel, I feel like you're talking about me. But yeah, I remember your husband is called Daniel as well. <laughs> When yeah. I brought Daniel last year, I was hoping that he would want to move there, but he said, mm, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he liked Kampala. He liked Uganda a lot. Yeah. A lot. He yeah. said, oh, we could do this. And I'm like, no, no, no. I want yeah. South Sudan. <laughs> I mean, Kampala, it would be easy for any American to live in Kampala because it is a city. Mm -hmm. But in South Sudan, uh, you are in a village and uh, it's so different and uh, and it's very hard. It's very difficult to live there. Mm -hmm. So he's he's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. from I'm from Iowa, so we have more of the country living. Oh, so you, you I think that's why I love South Sudan so much. I just love yeah. it's just peaceful. Where Kampala is busy, it's city, it's yeah. It's, I mean, a village in 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 America. Uh, I mean, the countryside in America is not like um, South Sudan village because you still oh, yeah, have access sure. to <laughs> yes. clean water and uh, electricity and roads and you know, oh, a lot sure. of things. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. I, did, I have not lived, even living in South Sudan. I mean, we still had, you yeah. know, water from a well and, you know, Brad Belis, he put the water underground. So, yes, I took a cold shower, but... It was yeah. still nice, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I still have not lived it, roughing it like the South Sudanese yes, truly yes. have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're right. Yeah. Our 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 tukuls, our buildings, the houses in Tonch are better than any other villages' houses uh, because they have running water. They We have solar power system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but it's a village. When you are there, you... you, you you have really tested uh, a life in a village. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, in Tonch. I love it. It's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but there are many blessings. I'm thankful to be here in America, to be a voice for the South Sudanese and to share, yeah. you know, because, and that's what I've told Andrew before, you know, on the news, you don't hear all the things that God's doing, but we get to share that, you know, yeah, about yeah. like the spear masters or the witch doctors coming to Christ and, yeah. You know, yeah. there's so many things that we get to hear about or, you know, James Conn just had a baby girl and, yeah, you know. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And, uh, and actually, uh, the support that uh, one of our friends gave to Con Care is very important because Con is a, a disabled guy and he he could not be able to build himself a house, you know, no matter what. But uh, that support was great, you know. Uh I, I I can't remember the name. Uh, Robert, you, yeah, Robert Flesher. Oh, oh no, no Shane Wilson. Shane Wilson, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shane yeah. Wilson, yeah. Mm -hmm. Shane Wilson really be, will be remembered uh, forever in South Sudan because of uh, this great support he uh, he gave to Concare. So we we very thankful. And you know, one other thing I like very much about every village is trip. You know, traveling to South Sudan constantly every year. Uh, to meet people 
and uh, pray for them and uh, disciple them and see the need there. You know, people feel uh, very much closer to American, you know, because Americans coming to see them and pray for them, you know, as a team, mm -hmm. they enjoy that. And uh, we, we, we like that very, very much because our team working on the ground, working there in, in, in South Sudan, when they see the team coming to see them and appreciate what they are doing, and support them and some of them are donors you know the the ones supporting every village it is very encouraging it's very encouraging and it, it's good yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i hope for i hope many many more trips so if anybody is listening to this podcast yeah. <laughs> you want to go to south sudan <laughs> yes. we can make that happen <laughs> please we want more of you to come uh, keep coming go to south sudan and see the work there and uh, pray with our guys and support them Mm -hmm. Yes, and amen. amen. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Daniel. It's been a joy. It's so fun to have you here. I'll definitely have you on again before you head back to Uganda. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Tiana. Thanks yeah. a lot. Absolutely. All right. So we uh, welcome everybody back to the next episode as we answer the question, what are topics you've covered at pastor conferences? Take care.